All right, so here we're starting the pour on the back face of the blade. I cut out a simple notch around the center shaft. This is about three tablespoons of epoxy. This is the MAS. It is one part hardener to two parts resin. But that's what it looks like uh, when you put the, the epoxy down onto dry four ounce fiberglass. I've got about maybe three eighths or a quarter inch of overhang all around the edge. I cut out a notch completely. Uh, when you get in here around the center shaft, the fiberglass cloth doesn't take a 90 degree bend, so you always end up with air bubbles wherever you try and force it into a bend, uh, including trying to make it bend around the edge of the blade. So I always recommend just lay it flat. Keep it flat on the edge, trim it close. Keep it flat along uh, the shaft here, cut the notch out, just keep it flat. You run into far less problems doing it that way. Um, uh, you avoid almost almost all the air bubbles. Once it's starting to saturate in and the wood's starting to shine through, this is knotty pine, by the way. Knotty pine here, there's the knot, with purple heart thin pieces right here, and then vertical grain uh, western red cedar for the, the center shaft. And for this first pour, I'm just trying to soak the, the fabric. And soaking doesn't mean leave a super thick pool on top. It means just get the fabric wet enough that you can't see the, the texture. The, the crisscross pattern uh, wants to disappear into the wetness, almost like the cloth is no longer there. Uh, make sure everything is dust free as, as much as you can get your shop to be. Don't be stirring stuff around while you're doing this. Uh, do not clean your wood surface with any sort of tack cloth. That has a, a very bad reaction with epoxy and it won't harden. So just use a plain old dry cotton cloth and blow on it. That's, that's all I do. And as you get close to being done, uh, move around from side to side and look at it at different angles and try and get the light get the light to reflect and bounce off it so you can use your eye to make sure there's no dry spots and uh, as well as no saturated spots. If you do see a pool, if you do see a pool, just go in and kind of twist and shove and move it around. You're just trying to get everything soaked. You know, three tablespoons is weight. You, know, you don't want to you don't want to put six tablespoons down here on the blade. This is where you're going to be feeling the weight the most, given that this is out at the far end of your of your paddle motion. So I don't try and skimp on the epoxy, but there's really no need to go heavy, especially once you see that everything is saturated. Now I do pour a second coat. And that second coat is maybe one and a half, it's about half the size. So I do the, the, first, the first batch, I go three tablespoons. The second batch is typically about three teaspoons. There, uh, for a good adhesion between the two coats, I like to put my finger down. When my finger still leaves a fingerprint, but the tip of my finger is dry, that's when I put the second coat down. Uh, and sooner than that or later than that, uh, I don't like to. I think the best adhesion between coats comes about when you have it right at that point where it's tacky. You can still see your fingerprint, but your finger comes away dry. So I'm going to check this in about 45 minutes for my fingerprint, and uh, we'll be back for the second coat.